Hi, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hey. Hey. Hey, Hypnos. Hi. What's up, man? <laughs> Slowly but surely, everybody's joining. Mm hmm. Hey, Rina. Hi, Rina. Hello. I just fell asleep. <laughs> I just got home five minutes ago from work, so nice. <laughs> Hello, guys. <laughs> right on time. Hi. Hi it must... There he is. Hey, Hello, hey, King. Hey, What's going on, everybody? Late as usual, right? <laughs> 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 So good to hear all of your voices now. I know all of you are going through so much like memories and like energy now. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to talk about what we're about to talk about now. But I'm curious as to what kind of ETs you guys want to talk about today. Because we were going to go over Pleiadians and Draco. But if you guys mm -hmm. want to change it up, definitely let me know. Serious. <laughs> Serious. Serious? Okay. <laughs> Serious today? Okay. All right, let me queue up my computer. And I think we're going to start out with just their history a little bit. So getting to them, and then we're going to talk about who they are. What is it? This is going to be good. Okay. Let's get to the galactic history. I'll let him cook. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then I gotta I gotta add the bot in. It's slash joy. I had to go in and I was like, wait, Addy, Andy, how do you do it again? And then I had to screenshot it. Okay. <laughs> now recording. All right, right at three three three. Let's go. So, hey, nice. Perfect timing. I know, right? So we're back at the Galactic History PowerPoint. You guys know this is my favorite of all time. Now, I think um, I don't want to skip ahead. So let me see where we're at. So we get to the creation of the universe. Which uh, we say that so like <laughs> lightly. Oh, yeah. Creation of the universe. You know, <laughs> it's nothing, right? <laughs> Just, nothing. Just a regular Friday night. <laughs> I know. It's regular Tuesday. <laughs> so we got Earth. And then we definitely need to get back to um, the white hole because even I'm still trying to understand that fully from the GFL. So when I understand that fully, we will have a class on that for sure. Bro, it looks like uh, the Pink Floyd album and I'm just really into it. I really want to know what it is. <laughs> what this being right here? <laughs> no, the hole, the white hole. You um, you haven't seen the Pink Floyd um, Dark Side of the, the album movie? cover. Yeah. Mm. It's I'm literally to look the same up. picture. <laughs> No. you right what okay i'm gonna keep that up on my phone i gotta look into that okay let's skip over to so we're now we're going down in densities so now source is trying to get as low as possible and i want you to take note of that what i said source getting as low as possible because if we touch on the Draco today, that's going to be a very important point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have beings going to Arcturus. And now we're at Sirius. So as you know, Lyra is the beginning of all life in the galaxy. Or they argue in the universe, but for now I know it's the galaxy. So some non-physical Lyran beings went to Sirius which operate at the fourth density, which is the astral realm, and higher densities. They slowly lower to third density physical existence. Now, if you are a Syrian, you may actually feel, uh, you may feel more resonant with the astral realm. That's a huge thing I noticed. Or like the third density, it just feels so, I mean, you, I guess you could say this for a lot of high vibrational beings, but especially for Syrians, you'll notice it's like, Third density is kind of, you have a connection to it, but you prefer the fourth or the astral realm. So the Syrians became very skilled at genetics 
and etheric engineers of DNA or etheric, sorry. So what you're going to notice is when we get more in depth and serious and how many beings there are there, this skill geneticist ability is going to actually be important. And that's also going to relate with the Anunnaki. So two Syrian cultures develop. Okay, this is actually really important. Okay, I'm curious if any of you actually remember. Okay, Kali said, yes, I love the astral realm. I'm always in the astral realm when I'm not in the physical realm. Bro, I'm telling you, I feel the same way. But as a Syrian, I bet you it's a little bit more potent. Two Syrian cultures develop. So one believe in service to others. And the other believed in service to self for the good of all. So this is where you start to see the, the separation. We're like, no, well, if we benefit ourselves, then it's good for all. No, if we benefit and look to take care of all, we could be good for all, right? And this is where it started to separate because they're both right, but it started to get more polarized. So today, 80% of civilizations are service to others, of course. But back then, it really started to separate the beginning developing the perfect the perfect body via dna manipulation to return to source became a very strong focus so sirius started to have a lot of beings who were forgetting their connection to source so what what a lot of people will say getting trapped in the incarnation cycle that's something that we all as souls have experienced and we're afraid of but we're weary of it we're like, we don't want to get trapped doing this. And we'd make sure that's why we have spirit guides and stuff like that to make sure we don't get lost in that. Okay. So we're looking over here. Reproduction of planets required the evolution of mammals. So you already know, we already talked about evolution a little bit, how that plays a part hugely in consciousness. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over and get to serious so lyrans and vegans began to colonize other star systems vegans escaping conflicts went to altair centauri and sirius so you could see way let me let me actually go back let's see the timestamp. okay it just says 100 million years ago so it's not really specific but essentially you could see how there's different times where beings are coming to sirius so in your memory, a lot of you that are Syrian, you're going to see there's a little bit of difference. Like, oh, I was in Lyra a little longer, or I have experience with wolf beings in Sirius. I have experience with water beings in Sirius. The diversity is very similar to Orion, actually. And we already know Orion is like the America of the galaxy. So Sirius was actually just like this and, and still is in a sense. Okay, or oh, here's here's where it gets good. Lyrans with a dominant feminine polarity and a service to others culture decided to heal third density Syrians who had forgotten their spiritual source or got lost in the third density uh, density. So when you look at that, it's interesting because in my memory, I'm not I don't have a lot of memories in Sirius, but from what I remember. The biggest one is wolf beings. And they're cool because at one point they did get lost in the third density. Wolf beings just look like wolves, but humanoid. And I really like their claws. Like they just have a really cool culture, but they got kind of animalistic. It's like they were, it's like humans. It's like they're, they're advanced, but they're not. They still have war amongst themselves and the still mentality of very warlike. Basically like what Luca said, low-key like that, <laughs> but with clothes on. And it wouldn't be in a damn bedroom. I don't know who's dancing like that. Is that a filter? <laughs> I'm dead, bro. I bet you that's you, Luca, who did that too. <laughs> so now let's go to, oh, here's a good part too. Tension developed between two Syrian groups, the Vagans and ex Lyrans, which spread across the Sirius star system and beyond. So this is where you see more 
diversity starting to develop because they're starting to spread out throughout Sirius and see what's good. And I could see now, especially my memories, the cultural differences and how big it was. Sirius A, a lot of wolves and um, dog beings. And then you go to Sirius B, it's like all water beings, for example. And then Sirius, the next one, I think it's Sirius C. Then you get a lot of humanoids. And um, uh, that's where you find Anunnaki, things like that. Very kind of diverse. Okay, this is where we get to the the Lyrans were starting to say, all right, we got to head out somewhere. And the Reptilians were starting to pick up, and that's where they went to Maldek. Let's skip ahead and see if there's anywhere where Sirius is brought up again for the history. Okay, here's where we get to the Pleiadians. So let's stop for that one, and let's go to the website. All right. So again, we're at, you know what, actually, let's go to, um, let's go to one of my favorites, Starseed584, and let's look at some of the pictures we got. All right, so as we look here, let's go to the Syrians. I see them right there. I'm seeing if there's anywhere else because I'm pretty sure there's... Okay, so there, there's where they are. So there's more Syrians there. Okay, and that's all I see so far. So let's go right here. Oh, wait. Oh, no, that's Orions. But this caught my eye, these Orion beings, because a lot of the Syrians look like that too. Okay. Overview. Sirius often referred to as a celestial metropolis or metropolis sorry you know i can't pronounce that right is an astoundingly vast star system teeming with life and historical significance the allure of sirius extends to its age strategic position environmental richness advanced civilizations and its profound spiritual resonance there's a lot of that spiritual power within Sirius. It's really cool. So as you can see, they're as old as like 200 to 300 million years old. And they have a connection with Earth, which is super cool. Now, um, when we go, when we have an event where we talk about the Lyrans, that's where we're going to get to Earth. Because the Lyrans have um, a little bit of a more, what's the word? For lack of a better word, more experience with Earth in their history. But as you can see, all different types of beings do, especially Pleiadians. So we can see here, um, there's a lot of different extraterrestrial races, including Lyrans, Draconians, Andromedans, Arcturians, Pleiadians, just, just to name a few, right? <laughs> Sirius boasts an extensive range of ecosystems, attracting interstellar travelers keen on studying different life forms. So we kind of know Sirius as water beings, but that's um that's because there's a lot of plants with a lot of water there. So that's very common, but you know there's way more to that. Ooh, there's a lot more. I gotta read over this, man. What? There's so much more info in here. Yes, I updated it a little bit. Yes, gang, just a little bit, eh? Just a little. <laughs> Sirius A. So we see dominating during the early galactic war phases and Sirius B aquatic felines and humanoids re-owned for their distinctive features and skills and then here's the Anunnaki now if I forget remind me because we're gonna talk about how the Anunnaki all came about and how it plays a part in Sirius um an assemble of intergalactic refugees with a tall yo you put in big words in here bro i gotta read my dictionary <laughs> tumultuous history deserving of its comprehensive study the galactic war serious especially serious a served as a refuge during the galactic war interestingly serious remained non-participative in the war so they didn't play a part they didn't want to be too much in it the conflict 
saw the emergence of alliances like the truce between the Syrians and the Draconians, as well as collaborative efforts against common adversities like the Draco and Orion Empire. So now we get to Earth. Post-war, the Syrians became recognized for their spiritual depth and cosmic knowledge. So a lot of people on Earth back in those days were referencing the Syrians and um, you see like for like when you look at some Chinese deities, Indian deities, even Native American ones, you look pretty much everywhere and you see a mention to different beings, especially like Lyrans, Syrians are very powerful and Pleiadian. Those I notice are the big ones and the Arcturians now are like yelling, what about us? So Arcturians also there too. They're very keen with their knowledge and bringing knowledge to humans. Some believe they played a pivotal role in Earth's evolution, both spiritually and technologically. Their unique bond with Cetesians, hoping to pronounce that right, like, like whales, okay, I see what you're talking about, like whales and dolphins, is another testament of their extensive influence. The diversity is so cool. I need to announce that. Like, you see so many different aquatic beings that look so different oh i want to mention this the dolphins that are on earth are actually related to the dolphin beings that are out there so if you actually i'm thinking about that one time there was one star seed on youtube and he talked about talking with dolphins and being able to communicate with them and you already know how advanced they are and he was communicating with a dolphin who was basically telling him about uh atlantis and these beings have immense knowledge about atlantis and with other star seeds that claim to talk with dolphins they actually report the same thing they're like they know about atlantis and they talk about sirius which a lot of them were confused they're like why are you guys mentioning sirius and it's because it's just like how um the dinosaurs were the more for lack of a better word primitive versions of the draco when they came to earth the Draco called the dinosaurs smaller versions of themselves, quote. So Syrians also did the same thing with dolphins. They like we already talked about how every animal on Earth is a descendant of the extraterrestrials. Like the extraterrestrials came and placed their DNA here, which is why it's so diverse as well. So when you are interacting with Syrians or even dolphins, you'll notice there's a mesh. There's like a, it's like they recognize each other and the dolphin beings out there, the dolphins as they're essentially their cousins are like what it looked like when they were evolving smaller versions of themselves. That's what I like to call animals. Now, once they told me it like that, I was like, that's really cool. So as we're scrolling, you can see there's so much, so much different types. And the blue skin tone is actually pretty common. These ones really look close to Andromedans when I look at that. Okay, here's where I click the Pleiades. So let's go to Sirius. Whoa, you know what? We're going to have to skim over Sirius and see what's important because we got another one here, Sirius B and C. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we're just going to skim over. And if you guys want in-depth information about this, you already know you could come to Debbie Solaris's website yourself. But let me look through some of the comments. Lizard folk and draconians are not the same though. They are the same like DNA. They group them under the same category. But yes, they are different. In our understanding, they are different. But you will notice how much people put them together because they are kind of they are the same DNA in that sense. Strains. It's like saying like like black people, white people, and how they're different, but they're the same, right? I don't know what I am. All I know is that I'm from Sirius and I love the aquatics, always drawing mermaids and dolphins obsessing. Keep it up, bro, because you already know when you get those memories, things are going to really start making sense in the way. Remember, I'm saying this to all of you guys. The best way and the easiest way to get memories is to focus on becoming fifth dimensional. And we mentioned this a little bit, but I'll skim over it a little bit again. On the fourth dimension, which is where all of us are at 
you're at actual awareness. When you're at fifth dimension, you become soul aware. So that's when your awareness becomes so, it becomes another level. So then you have access to your soul's information. So you will get memories naturally. And you'll kind of be in and out, like we said before, but the more you do this, the more you could root yourself in 5D and you will feel, people are always like, oh, 5D, you're always peace, love, and unity. That's true, but that's just, um, that's just a symptom of being in 5D. You just always are happy and you see the light in everything. Reptilians were genetically modified by avians. Yes, that's at like way the beginning of history. 100%. Just like um, avians created reptilians and then the felines created humans. Wild dragons existed a long time ago, a long time before. 100% what my dream. Can you please tell us about the different suns and how they affect the skin colors? I like that a lot. So I don't have full understanding of which color makes different skin tones but this is my understanding of how the federation always explains it to me they say so like a red sun as all of us here our skin absorbs the sun the more melanin you have the more you could absorb the sun so you'll notice anybody as you know anybody closer to where it's hotter on the planet has darker skin so they can absorb the sun more it's very much like that so it's like um I'm not sure, like, I can't explain to you, oh, like a white sun will do this color or, or a blue sun will create this color, but it also depends on the size. So, for example, if it's like a white sun, then if it's huge and the planet's closer to it, the beings will have a darker blue, like a really dark blue. And then if their planet's farther away or their sun is smaller and emits less energy, then their skin is going to be a lighter blue. And so you'll notice, especially when you travel around the galaxy, when you astral project, which is a lot of you, they don't have racism. It's very primitive. So what we're battling on Earth, they're like, oh my God, like, what are they going to see? It's just war within ourselves. And um, they always embrace their variations. So if you come across a black human, and or a, a brown skin human and a white skin human it's like no difference they're like yep you're where are you from oh i'm from sirius oh i'm from sirius too right yes they have like afro hair things like that or they have straight hair doesn't matter it's all dependent on your evolution and your strain and where your people went and started evolving from that's a really good question actually i always ask them about red skin and they always tell me, they're like, don't worry about that now. We're going to give you that information when it's needed. So I guess it's not that important, but I always found red skin really, really cool. Or like red eyes. I always wanted red eyes. Okay, let's go back to the website. Okay, so we got Alpha Canis Majoris. And Sirius is also known as the dog star, reflecting its... Prom Bro, me and words today. Um, whatever. I'm just gonna skip that. <laughs> but like, Canis Major, dog beings, huge. So Sirius marketed the flooding of the Nile, in or marked the flooding of the Nile in ancient Egypt and the dog days of summer for the ancient Greeks. And then you see a lot more here. Okay, so that's information we could skip over extraterrestrial race of people who assist earth and its inhabitants the syrians are considered to be spiritual warriors and are more spiritually advanced than most off-world civilizations they originate from a double star in the constellation canis major or orion's dog i like how they always mention dogs and um it's funny because <laughs> macklin has a dog and she always says that this dog incarnated with her and came from Sirius, which it did. When she said that, I'm like, damn, like, you, you, you're you, that deep? You know, like that? And she has this huge connection with her dog. And so she was like, I, I wanted to come to Earth with a dog being else I would miss them. 
Okay, Sirius A lies only eight light years away. They appear human and are distant relatives of us. You'll see they're mostly benevolent humans or benevolent aliens, my bad. Fourth to six dimensions. If you guys want to go into what it looks like when your consciousness raises up to like the sixth dimension, don't let me forget that too, because I could let you guys know what I understand about it so far. Very wise, very empathetic. Okay. Sirius has a direct link with our solar system for sure. And the Syrians have been amongst us since the time of the Mayans and Egyptian civilizations. So they play a huge part in Earth history. And I'm looking at some of the uh, beings you guys are sending. And I love it. Like this one that Andy sent. I love those pictures. You can see how it's like, oh, some are blue. Some, how come they have peach skin? Or maybe a tint of red. All dependent on the star. And you know, Sirius alone, and just like any star system, has thousands, like so many planets. So of course it's going to be incredibly diverse. Physically, as generally, as a generality, the Syrians had darker skin, darker hair and eyes, and were not as large as the Lyrans. As far as their personality and characteristics, we would say that they were very devoted to serving mankind, extremely devoted. And like you can see in the Galactic History PowerPoint, it's like you can see at parts where they like to go and said, they said, what did it say? Syrians going um Syrians going somewhere to help beings that were lost in the third density you see that a lot they love to help people rise up in consciousness and service to others let's see here whereas the Lyrans were committed to ruling mankind which is interesting the Syrians were interested in helping or sometimes even saving mankind they could be very very zealous and because of that trait, they often referred or interfered where they did not belong. But you could say they were just, you know, they were just trying to help mankind. They were crusaders. Service to others is a huge thing for them. And actually, I think it's interesting how they said Lyrans were committed to ruling mankind. Because it looks like she's referring to the, the beings that there's a specific word for it when they are basically getting distance from uh like from their usual it's called um renegade like how we interfere we see renegade pleiadians renegade things like that renegade lyrans are a big thing too okay we see the service to others they are a watery, dreamy race who are basically an evolved version of dolphins and whales somewhat. They are said to live in the Christ consciousness and are in a solar system very linked with our own in a psychic manner. They too play a role in helping Earth, but they are doing it from a more subtle standpoint. Like through the, you already see the water beings that are here through the seas. So when you see people talking with um, dolphins, whales, things like that. Like what we were discussing earlier, that's a very subtle way they want to do it. Now, we did mention way before the law of non-interference, so they don't want to just come and interfere and make, uh, manipulate humans' own evolution. Just as they got to choose how they wanted to evolve, they want humans to choose how they want to evolve. We see Egypt mentioning Syrians a lot. Many of them lived on Sirius before. In fact, many of them even had numerous lifetimes both on Earth and on Sirius. Now, here it's talking about uh, like the Egyptian gods and things like that. Often during Lumerian and Atlantean times, when alien civilizations openly interacted with our ancestors, a lot of the Atlantean knowledge, example with regards to auras and all of that type of stuff, traced back to Sirius. It should therefore come to no surprise that Isis in Egyptian mythology was seen as the great healer um, who could even restore Osiris's life and body after he's been murdered and cut into pieces by Seth. So these stories that they tell 
have truth to them. Let's see if there's anything else important here that we need to touch on. He also mentions human inhabitants of the Series B system that are red, beige, gray, or black skinned, as well as reptilian and aquatic beings. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, this website could go on and on and on. So we won't go too in depth if you want to know more. You can head over here and she also has YouTube videos discussing some of her readings. I know I got <laughs> I got homework to do too. At the moment, I'm learning about draconians and exploring my lifetimes there so I could get peer information and I'm learning about goblins, which some of you in here have experience with and are facing those. So I'm learning as much as I can so that I could also teach you guys as you guys are teaching me a lot. Yes. Ooh, I want to talk about Draco next for sure. Ooh. Oh, that gets me fired up, dog. <laughs> so now to kind of talk about Sirius, then we could, you guys could ask some questions so we could get more information about the Syrians. But when I look at the Syrian beings and diving into their whole constellation, oh, Anunnaki. Yes, thank you, Sarah. It just sparked my mind right now. Now, there was a point in time when there was a lot of conflict in Sirius. It mentions this in the galactic history PowerPoint as well, but we'll leave that for now. But there was a lot of conflict in Sirius at a certain point where you know it talked again about service to others and service to self and different beings having conflicts because they were so diverse. And again, this is early galactic history. So this is where beings were just, were, they were learning the intricate things that had built them to make them so advanced now. So this is their, we like to call it our primitive days. We were having so much wars in Sirius and so much division. And then this is when the higher ups or the way higher dimensional beings, creators, if you want to call them, said, all right, look, just like how they sent the basic, basically Christ consciousness over to Orion and then Earth at that time, they wanted to create some sort of solution for Sirius. And they said, all right. Well, we need to find a solution for these beings so that they could come together. A same ruling class that represents all of them. And that is where you come across Anunnaki. They said, all right, let's mix the DNA of all of the beings in Sirius and make one ruling class. These beings are meant to rule. Sara sent one picture right now. They look very similar like that. And there's, of course, different variations. Some of them... They started out really black, like midnight black, like Meta Knight. And their pigmentation was so rich. And they had the afro hair. And they had, a lot of them, they had dreadlocks. Call them dreadlocks or locks. And that was a very potent um, style for them. This is where a lot of black people get their culture now and their motivation from because as black people here represent all a human all of the human race the anunnaki represented all of the syrian races so you see commonly when you mix up everything together it creates black people or black looking people that made me question too i was like how come and it's a lot of dna intricacies and biology but it makes black skin people so at the end of the day all beings looked at the anunnaki and sirius and said those are my leaders because they literally were them. So no matter if you were a water being, a wolf being, um, a humanoid or a reptilian, you looked at the Anunnaki as their leaders. Ooh, I like this. Thank you, Andy. Here's a picture of some positive draconians. The draconians have a, a complex history, which doesn't stop fascinating me. So I will... In this one, we'll talk halfway about Draconians. And then in the next one, which I think I'm going to make next Saturday or maybe a little sooner, we'll go deeper into Draconians. Because I'm still, I'm just in the process. Me and a few of my other homies, including Broly, are getting a lot of memories with um, Draco. I want to show you guys what I looked like. 
because I've been testing out this form and using it in the astral when I go into the astral war. And it's basically like an Alpha Draconian, like with the wings. And I had this like red skin and these red eyes and these horns. I loved it. Okay, so. Sara asked, big question, why did I incarnate as an Anunnaki? I'll tell you, partly it was because you wanted to end as a royal soul is part of your soul's journey to lead other souls and to basically represent them by being connected to them. So a lot of you that are royal souls, it here, humans have tried to copy what they saw in the stars. They're like, oh, kings and queens, okay, they rule above the others. That's a very low vibrational way. When we talk about royal souls they are literally connected to all so they could feel the pain of all and the love of all they are everybody and the people are them which is why they're royal so someone like you sarah you had a connection in sirius and you were one soul that was chosen to lead in sirius and become the anunnaki after your home planet was destroyed or our home planet was destroyed in lyra so after that, our home planet was destroyed and we're still, we, we said to ourselves, we can't forget that we're royalty and we're always going to be Lyran royals. But no matter where we go, we're going to remember that. But now we got to experience, now the galaxy is our home. So as a Lyran soul like you, you were one of those that said, all right, we got to go somewhere else. And you found the Anunnaki, a place where you could be of service to others. Really cool soul journeys, bro. I'm telling you. Luca said, I have a memory of being Alpha Draco. Me and you, dog, and Jeannie, we got to talk. I am so obsessed with the Alpha Draco form. It is... I had a very interesting history because a lot of people that were Alpha Draco started out dark and then started going light. I was light and started going dark. And then I went back. So it was... I was trying to explore what it meant to be a Draco, but we'll get into that later. Luca said, I was a white one though. Luca and white colors of the, the albino alpha Draco were very strong. Like all beings and all alpha Draco looked at the albino ones as like top dogs. So that's a whole nother ball game. And hopefully that sparks up some stuff for you. You couldn't tell Cass nothing in his dark phase. Bro, I still haven't even fully got those memories yet. Because they're going to be very, very heavy in terms of the energy. And so I haven't gotten fully there yet. But that alpha form is powerful. My favorite was the wings and the claws. When I started getting the memories, I literally was like this in my room. And I remember battling and I was like this. So... I'm gonna while it's in my mind, I'm gonna say this right now. As a draconian, I it, I incarnated in Draco because I wanted to help the whole galaxy from the inside, from the draconian standpoint. So I wanted to help the draconians to become higher vibrational, and I wanted to learn about them so that I could understand their culture and who they are. And I end up using their power and who they are in all of my lives. So even as a Lyran, I use that power from the draco and the draco experience in my lyran history so i say i'm 90 percent lyran 10 percent draconian that 10 percent draconian one of my favorite lives and played a huge part of who i am now they have actually let, let me not skip ahead let's let's just um let's keep going a little bit stick with anunnaki for now get me excited so anunnaki now when you see here and like the picture that Andy sent, you can see now there's different variations of the Anunnaki, but they still have like a dark skin tone because they still represented all the beings. And, you know, my sister's an Anunnaki and you'll notice with all Anunnaki people, they have or it's easy for them to be in an egocentric state. And my sister actually has the power to tell people like what to do and they'll do it so we talked about how all star seeds have powers and specific ones too that are very unique to them 
like for example um like a lot of lyrans they have that love power that anybody they have an attraction to that person just falls in love with them that's a very common lyran thing anunnaki a powerful one is they could command and it'll get done my sister she's she's like how come every time i i tell someone to do something they'll just do it no matter what it is they'll just do it and i was like okay it's too early to get her into that stuff yet because she'll think i'm crazy a little bit i'll wait till she awakens more but then i told her and i was like just go to school and test it out just go somewhere and test it out. even she'll catch me she'll be like vinny and they call me vinny around here vinny can you do this for me and i'm like i know her power's working on me but i'm like i'll do it and then once i do it i'm like wait why not just tell her to do it herself <laughs> it's because part of her power is command <laughs> and that's where she can um get a little oh this is another anunnaki thing is one of their down falls or where they could have a downfall is they are um they could again be egocentric and feel like they rule over others whether that's very lightly or very largely my sister it's very like medium like like it's not strong but it's not weak so she could do stuff herself like if she were to move out she could do work but in the house she she'll not do as much work as the rest and we all know her for that we used to call her lazy but that's just because she's not an Aki. She would always, even before this lifetime, she would always get others to do the work for her. And that's just how she's always lived her soul. It's like, I'm here to look over everything. And I actually gave her a bracelet that had planets on it. It was like black, it had stars, and it had planets on it. And I gave this to her and I said, this is so you can remember all the planets that you've helped and that you lead right now, even though you are here on Earth. And it kind of like sparked. She went like this. She was like, even though she's like, she's not fully awakened yet. She was just like, ooh, like I could feel that a little bit. And then when she's awakened, she's going to see all of that. She's going to wear that bracelet a lot more as she does now. So that's a cool thing with Anunnaki. Um, Ange said, what's the Pleiadian power? Pleiadians are good at helping and they're good at light like anywhere they go it's just brightness All, they could just smile and everybody feels good or they see where there's darkness and they look for a way that their light could help that darkness which so cool their downside a very common one is that they struggle with um they struggle with Okay, it depends. Because I'm, I'm going to just say it. Because I'm trying to figure out how to say it in a way that fully says the truth. But a lot of Pleiadians, they feel very pushed back from darkness. As you've seen in the PowerPoint last time. We could go over that again if you guys want me to. But it says when they went to the Pleiadians then. Or when they went to the Pleiades to create a light. A, you know what? Let's just go over to it real quick okay i gotta restream quick okay let me go to the pleiades because this place is a oh it's right here wait never mind i'm just looking at it says pleiades so right here we're skipping over now to the orion when things were happening in orion when the Pleiadians heard about the Orion Wars and the plight of Lyran descendants, they felt the urge to help. As very commonly with Pleiadians, they're like helpers. The Pleiadians felt alive again and zealously attacked the Orion negativity in many ways. The Orion Empire struck back and destroyed a populated planet in the Pleiades. This destruction of the Pleiadian planets impacted the consciousness of many across the galaxy as it's in their DNA, their Lyran DNA, and all of the beings are like, whoa, like, what was that? The Pleiadians withdrew from the conflict. They were like, in Lyra, we always said never again. And so when that happened, they were like, all right, we're not doing that. And they pulled out. But, um, oh, here we go. So before that, though, the Pleiadians became so focused on peace 
that they denied all conflict to the point where life lacked challenge and learning. Pleading culture isolated itself from the rest of the galaxy. Um, we'll still do another uh, event specifically for Pleiadians. But Pleiadians, when you meet them, they're so bright. And they're always like, how can I help you? Or like, I love you. And instantly you're like, oh, like I just love this person. But it's like they're so bright. Many of them you come across that when there's darkness, they look for a way that they can transmute the darkness without having to be like having to fight it or having to ex go deep into a challenging time again. They're like, let's help. And that comes hugely from when their Pleiadian planets were destroyed, which reminded them of what happened in Lyra to them too. So it's a very interesting dynamic of how this plays a part in not just the whole galaxy, but their souls and how they operate. So it's like Lyrans, very commonly... The fighters, their downside is they could get lost in the dark sometimes, or they could be too nice, too light, and they have to discover, all right, we got to fight. Palladians, they're extremely bright, but downside is they don't want, they could av they avoid fighting as much as possible. I've always been a lover, not a fighter. I hate confrontation and love to help and be there for people. This is one of my Palladian sides. 100 per damn cent so as much you want to help people as much as you can but if they're too dark and then you realize you got to fight you're like pull back we'll, we'll just wait wait for them to get to a certain area and then we could help them it's very angelic when you think about it very very angelic way of doing it um even though you'll find angels They'll come in even on the darkest of days, but it's very like non, um, non confrontational too much. Very much they show their light and they give them wisdom and then they bounce. If they have to fight for dark means, they, they got their heavenly fire and they got their light to cast them out. But it's very angelic in the sense that we'll wait for them to evolve and get to a certain point, help them, leave them signs, do this and that. And then once they're here, then we'll pull in, which is very sounds like a Pleiadian thing too. Okay, we talked about them a little bit. We scraped on pleadings a bit. The Syrians. Do you guys have any questions about what we talked about so far before we get a little bit into the Draco? Luca said, I hate conflict incredibly and love harmony. Chilo will fight though. There are Pleiadians. There's a sector of Pleiadians that are warriors so again i'm generalizing when i say oh pleadings are typically like this or like that it's like saying oh humans are kind of hostile and primitive but then you go around and you see so many different pleiadians or you see so many different humans my bad who are of the light and are very positive so i'm just generalizing although all my lives are constantly clashing with each other the peaceful Pleiadians, the wa the warrior Lyrans, and the dark Draco. I could be very dark, but I'm so soft and can't hurt people. But or you can't hurt people, but also want to fight when something arises. But then I don't want to hurt again. Hold myself back, and on and on it goes on. You have a complex soul, so you have so many different areas where you could take from. And you're mixing them. Your soul has an incredible experience. This is for a lot of you. You know that your soul has incredible experience. Like, I'm going to use me as an example. The Lyran, pure light. And the Draco, pure dark. Like, total opposites. But I use them and I unify them. So I'm just experimenting with more of my Draco now. And I'm about to get the Draco ruin on my neck once I fully get into it and i've done my re everything i gotta do then i so far like i practice going to the astral with my draco form and it's funny because when i started doing that and i felt oh i felt powerful and the self-empowerment is big and so it was always like use your personal power 
and it's like you look to yourself and the lyrans it was like my lyran side was always you're unified look to the universe and others for power because you are them and they and i was like why are they so yin and yang just like yeah like robbie said why is it so yin and yang when do i pick just like actually remember how i said how we relive our lives here a lot when i was um when i was young my parents put me in karate class and i hated it i hated it i love it now but i hated it then i was always like i'm a lover i'm a lover this was my lyran days my light lyran days and then after that i got out and then i went to high school i had a lot of bullying and a lot of that which brought me into more of my lyran warriorship and i brought a lot of that karate into play and i loved it and then i realized i was too light too loving still and i had to find that internal fire and power more to make me more understanding of myself so then i went to draco and i started reliving my draco lives which is right now which is all about power within you you do what you want to do and you take you want it take it whoever you are you you show it that's amazingly cool culture of the draco but you can see how i can lead them down the dark path i hate it here i want to go home then i asked bro that was me at karate <laughs> I love Taekwondo as a kid as well, but then my knee got hurt. <laughs> One day I got beat up so bad in karate, I cried to my mom, and then they took me out, and that was years after. So yeah, it sounds like we got a little similar journey with Taekwondo. Robbie said to Ange, by the way, I think you thought of me, thought me how to be a warrior when we were fighting together for Orion. Okay, you see how you guys all have a warrior aspect to you that you're kind of questioning. You're like, okay, where does that come from? And you're wondering where that comes from because you want to understand your soul's history, how that played a part in you, your experience, how you then created that within you. And so whenever I would ask uh, like more advanced level people when I was coming up, I, and I wanted to know about my history. They were like, don't worry about your history. Worry about now. But I said, I need to know so that I can understand who I am now. And then now that I'm, I found who I am more and I delved into it. Now I know it's part of my job to help others dive into it. And all those people that were like, don't do that. Don't do that. They're like, okay, I see why you did that now. Paving your own path and you understanding who you are. I teach people that it's a huge part to understand that. So, you know who you are now okay if there is no question you guys feel free to ask a little questions i'm gonna um queue up the draco as we do that oh actually can i show you guys this let me uh stream <laughs> uh let me put that galactic history down i'm gonna show you guys some of my what is this called again my spotify playlist Why is my mind glitching? Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stream. Oh, it won't even look. Oh, here we go. It actually will. So I made this recently. I have an Alpha Draco playlist. <laughs> I who when I listen to this, I'm like, let's go. Quote, quote of Broly. Let's go, bro. And I listen to this and it the music music really does help me get into that uh mode of certain energies so i would notice the same song would play in my head all the time and it would link to the memories i'm getting and growing up music always played a huge part of my life especially mentally like music would always be in my head always playing and i fought it but now i see frequencies is a, i'll say for me for sure and i know it's a same for a lot of you that frequencies specifically music play a huge part in your energy and who you are in your life so this is like my alpha draco form you know what let me um if you guys want i will send a little link <laughs> here's my profile can i share it i don't know how to share it yet but you could just look me up here and you can see some of these playlists. So when we get to the Alpha Draco form, these are ones that are 
love these songs when I'm in that energy. I have my Milky Way Bounty Hunter one I love. I listen to this one mostly when I'm in the gym. This one is a mix of different songs, a lot of different music, but it makes me feel chill. It's more chill music. Lost in the Galaxy. It reminds me of uh, my memories when I was searching for my family and all of you uh, that are part, especially of my royal family, will remember when I was looking for you guys. It was thousands of years of searching. And this music reminds me of that. Some people would ask, why would you want to remember that if it's so painful? And I don't know. It just reminds me of what made me me. It's like asking, you were bullied so bad. Why do you look back then? Because that's a source of power. So when I need a source of power too, I come here. Traveling the universe with me. Love this one. This is more house music. I listen to a lot of house music. Orion. <laughs> and Gaia Warrior. And I actually drew that picture myself. People always ask me. I did. And then I have these other ones. <laughs> These are like reggae ones. You won't see these because I have I privated them. So if you guys want to check out that, thank you for sharing that, by the way. You guys could check that out. Um, and tell me what one's your favorite. Okay, now let me share the website. I'm going to go to... I'm going to do Starseed 4 or 584 first and i'm going to show you guys some of the pictures we won't go too in depth with the draco because i forgot starseed 584 has got a lot more information my homeboy put a lot more in there so we could stay here for now then we'll go to debbie solaris's next time one second okay there we go and let me read over some of these comments real quick Alpha Draco list is not there though. Oh, it's not? Okay, I just gotta um, make it available for all of you. Oh, I just gotta make it public. Okay, there. Now you'll be able to see it. All right, let's look at some of the Draco reptiles. I think they're separate categories. So we have the Draco reptile. Oh, when we get into the Draco, we definitely gotta save this for later. I sent the link because... in the chat. With the most info. What'd you say, sir? In the chat, I sent the link to the one with the most info. Okay, thank you. Okay, right away. That is the Draco Reptiles. Okay, bomb. So, the Dracos have a cast. I real I'm obsessed with these videos. Because it emphasizes really good how they evolved. And how their consciousness started to evolve so a lot of their soul experience you'll remember when you were just a little lizard and you were evolving and you were watching the lizard grow so then your soul could then inhabit it as an advanced being you'll see those so like here how the alpha draco started evolving with the wings alpha draco are a mix of dragons and um and draconians so these are the classic like working class. Okay. What that's what we'll call them, the most common. Then you have smaller reptilians and which are kind of goblin like. And then that's kind of creepy. Oh. <laughs> and then you have uh when going up you have the alpha draco and then you have the dragons and then you have the dark super consciousness. Their their levels really interesting. Actually, you know what? I have a whole um a whole briefing page that I wrote up on Draco. Let me stream that real quick. I just got to queue it up. This one will go more in depth as well. I got so much on the Draco man. Oh my god. We'll we'll have a whole event just for it. Okay, I got to end the stream quick. Here we go. All right, now you can see it. So I made this in June 
and I was always constantly adding to it. I will make this available for all of you too, so don't worry about that at all. I still got more to add to it since now I'm getting memories. I got lots more to add. This is talking about the beginning of the universe, um, our, the battle to draconian beings, fear and domination is a true power. So the complete opposite of the Lyran way was like light meets dark. And that's how the that's how the beings in the galaxy always teach the beginning of galactic history everywhere in the galaxy. It's oh the beginning was was light against dark, Elf Lyrans against Draco, the war that still lasts to this day. So I like this part. It talks about the great, great Lyran Wars. Okay, here we go. So this is their empire. We'll start here. The Greys, enslaved by the Draco, went on their conquest in Orion. The Draconians conquered many planets using their native species of that planet as slaves. So if you have great lives, you remember how much you'll have a huge thing with remembering enslavement and being manipulated and changed so that you can be a slave. I have a I know a star seed is very powerful and he is um uh orion star seed, purely orion star seed and he struggles with everywhere in his life still he's being enslaved and a mindset it's almost like he's also programmed to be a slave which is how the greys were like what the draconians did to the greys so um manipulating their dna to be void of emotion resulting in a disconnection from source energy the ones enslaved are unaware of this slavery and cannot understand the difference between right and wrong. They are used to do the Draconian's dirty work, which includes abductions, studying, and surveillance. You'll notice they're actually, the Greys are very interested in emotions. Like they study emotions because they're like, we used to have them, but we don't anymore. We want to understand it. And they study humans. As you know, humans are very known in the galaxy for the power of their emotions. So, grades, I'd like to study them and understand what is with emotions. But, again, it's like a slavery. Now that a lot of them, it's like when black people were free from slavery. And it's like, all right, but now we got segregation and we're held down still by the system. It's like that for the grades. So, it's like, oh, we're not enslaved anymore. You have your freedom. Yay. But you're still enslaved mentally. And you, the system is still against you. Very like that. Uh, the ones enslaved are unaware. Okay, we mentioned that. Used to do the dirty work. Uh, the interest. The interesting part is that this being or these beings take massive interest in human emotions and work on understanding how to extract souls. An understanding of the power of the soul is hugely looked after while they themselves have become basically soulless because of the Draco's enslavement, which makes us believe that these enslaved Dracos, or sorry, Greys, have a subconscious knowing of who they were, like I said, which is locked off by the genetic manipulation done to them. Now we're going up, insectoids. The scientists and doctors who work willingly or against their will for the Draco, very sensitive, it's psychic beings. I love insectoids. Whoa. Incredibly powerful beings. Uh, who are masters at language, healing, and studying anything. They do a lot of the brain work for the Draco. Mostly commonly seen on the side during abductions. Renegade humans. Humans who have joined the Dracos willingly or willingly. Reptilians common reptilians you see just the common class the alpha draconians the masterminds and leaders also known as the royal draco or the siakar then we have dark consciousness dragons dragons who have chosen to join the draco in their conquests and dark oversouls grand souls that lead the draco even creating them at the beginning of galactic history You know what? I didn't fully tell you guys why I started explaining or doing my 
uh, alpha draconian digging and using that form in the astral. And it's because I'm actually fighting an alpha Draco in my town. Now, you guys kind of know some of the stories that I've told. And I can't tell this one yet on YouTube because it's just in the works now. But the reptilian I've been fighting a lot in my town and been attacking the kids. They, when it left the one kid, it then left. And I was wondering, okay, well, where'd the Draco go? Because now the girl's good. And then it jumped on a reptilian starseed kid. And that's a very intricate thing we'll talk about next time. But long story short, um, I realized now this is an alpha draconian. And I knew a little bit before, but I needed more confirmation. So then I started seeing it. And it manipulates people so good. It literally controls my whole town. And now that I've been here, before I started doing star, or what's it called, demon hunting... The reptilians were everywhere. The common class, I call them. They were everywhere. And kids were always coming to me like, this reptile being keeps attacking me. No one believes me. And so then when I started doing all that work that I talked about on YouTube, then this alpha Draco came up. And it was mad. And so I was like, okay, you know, I want to, this is going to be my first time fighting an alpha Draco. But the first time I went, it was me and Broly. I had to ask Broly for help. And they already knew that I was going to come and ask for help, which was really cool. And I said, I'm going to need help. And it was Ange as well. Ange was like, I'll come. The first night, it was not. I actually, it separated us really good. It all had to do was send a succubus my way. And then I fell for it. So I realized it sent a trap. And this, this, this succubus has actually been attacking me for months. And it'll come specifically when I'm doing work against the reptilians or fighting them so i noticed since i started winning a lot of battles with them then this alpha draco i was like all right now we're we're on the boss level let's fight the boss then i end up leaving um i end up leaving um broly to fight it themselves and then we were like all right um my bad let's let's do this again and that was a huge moment for all of us. We we're like, whoa, this is kind of, <laughs> this is different than fighting any other type of being. And then now we are still in the process. I won't tell too much because we still got to, still in the works. I can't tell about these stories yet until they're accomplished. But I'll tell you, that's what's happening right now. And battling an Alpha Draco, very different from battling any other dark being because they literally, they're alphas. They control everything. They'll, they'll just be like, oh, they want to fight us? Send this being. Or... Oh, get them to do this. So there's a lot of intricate work. They're very good. Very good. Which is why I wanted to use my alpha form. Andy said the creators of the Draco weren't evil. It was their vision message uh, to the Draco before they left that was misinterpreted. Making them believe everything is theirs to own. The original message was everything is yours to take care of. And you know what? That was actually one thing I have to switch up in the message or in the draconian briefing because that is 100% true. And then when I asked, so are the Carrions evil or what's up? It was, no, they're not. Remember the felines and the avians came. They were selected to then start life in this universe and in this galaxy, which was like the white hole. So they were like, all right, you guys have chosen to create life. Humans, reptilians. And there was a whole purpose. So it was misinterpreted actually on purpose. Very interesting. So the avians aren't evil, but there was a plan for the galaxy and this universe. So not evil, but had a plan that was all for the light anyways. Source experiencing going very low to then go very light take note of that okay light against dark all of it you will see once we're done on earth 2027 is when the ets are gonna come I'll tell you that right now so when 20, 2027 when our family comes here a lot of us are gonna be able to go we're gonna be able to take a break go back up into the stars for a little bit and then come back we're gonna stay on earth right because we got our human bodies but we're gonna get to go home so until then our work is gonna be 
quite large. I was actually talking to Don yesterday and we were doing a little briefing and we were talking about when they're coming and I was like, I already know they're coming 2027 and all that. And she was like, you know, you make sure uh, you let your people know as well that we're going to have a lot of assignments and mission hard work to do before 2027. And that is why you may be getting a lot of mission work and a lot of assignments, a lot of tr heavy training because we're just getting humans ready for 2027. That's when the ETs, our family, us, we gave humans until 2027. And we said, you guys will give you till then. And if you don't fix your act, then we will. So we have until then. Yeah, 2027, I'll be... I'm 22 now. So, so what? I'll be like around 28 or so. Cool. Um, I'm kind of looking at what else we need to touch on. Because I think this was good. We talked for a good hour. Is there anything you guys may want to touch on briefly? If not related to the Draco, then we will just um, go right into questions and have a little discussion real fast. Any specific specific information you want to know about the Draco before we get out of it? I know you guys are excited. Let's see. Look, I'll be 19. I'll be 25. What? Oh, it's going to be lit. 30s. Well, by then, we're going to be way more advanced. You already see every year we're advancing, right? Every year we become more potent in ourselves, all of you. So 2024 is going to be a more solid year for all of us. And I've always told this by the GFL. It's going to be solidified. You know what? I want to tell, um, I want to tell this story. Something that happened last night. I shouldn't do it now though. I want, I want to do it now, but it's going to be a little intricate because I had a conversation with somebody on the reserve and he's a starseed like all of you guys, but he's actually a royal, um, a royal Native American. And so when I was talking with him, I found, um, hold on one second. I'm going to be literally two seconds. So if you follow me on snap you will see i found this like wasp nest outside when i was with my mom getting herbs and she's like look what i found and i was like well, this is like the coolest shit ever in my eyes right so it's literally like this is almost more valuable than like diamonds to me 444 i'm seeing that right now too and then i posted it on my snap and that kid, Royal, Royal um, Native American, he said, you're welcome, bro. And I was like, what? I actually have the text messages, like screenshot, which is why I wanted to go through them. But I have to get my phone and do all that intricate stuff. So we could talk about that another time. I'll show you guys. But he said, you're welcome, bro. And I was like, kind of confused. I'm like, why are you acting like you gave it to me? But I knew there was more to it. So I was like, all right. And then he started texting me. And... Is he was literally channeling the Native Americans and they're basically thanking me for what I was doing and they were like we gave you that as a gift I was like oh my god this guy's channeling and then at the end of the conversation he's like I don't know man I'm, I'm very spiritual not as much as you but it felt like I felt different having this conversation with you it felt like I was connected to something or what not he's basically saying I was channeling and I had to tell him I was like you were basically channeling and I gave him a quick message and he's like, whoa, okay, you're for real, for real. And I basically told him, I said, I work for the GFL. And I was basically saying, I love your planet. This planet is amazing. And now it is my planet. And I'm very excited to be here and to have this experience with you in school. Because I met him in high school. And I said, just to grow up with you in high school, it was amazing. And now you are being called to step into your power. And I didn't know he was a, a royal Native American yet. And I said, you know, you are called to do this. And I was like, you're drawn to music and all that stuff. And so he was like, okay, well, you're for real. And I said, yeah, I work for the ETs and you are helping us. 
So I want to thank you for what you're doing. And now you're being called into your power. And he was like, um, I never told anyone this. I keep it very secret. It's kind of a, a family thing. But everybody on the reserve knows me for being a royal, royal Native American and all of that. And he's going into it. And I'm like, you know, being royal is not egotistical like how humans have mocked and thought it was like. Being royal means you have you're connected to all your people literally and you have the power to you have a, a deep power that's within your blood or your soul that is used to help lead super cool so me and him are still talking about that royal bloodline i'm helping him out but i bet you he's gonna come in the server too and he's gonna be a leader in the server so i can't wait for that but that whole that whole interaction was so cool and i love this the way he said you're welcome bro and his his ancestors were literally channeling through me, so I was talking with them through him. And yeah, it was super cool. But anyways, let's go into questions. So if you guys have any questions or anything you want to discuss now, go right on ahead. Um, our next class we do, we're gonna discuss Draco whole on in depth, and we'll go all into that. So get ready because I'm also getting the memories and the information so I could teach you guys that. So I'm learning as we I'm basically learning as we go. But go ahead and ask your questions or speak on anything you would like to. I'm going to close up this stuff real fast. Okay. Regina, I have something to tell you quick. So, um... And Ski, if you wanted to say something right after, I would love for you to. Uh, Regina, this is for you quick. Your guys keep talking about... I think we already talked about this, your connection with water. And they want you to use water as a portal. And I think you've already noticed so far how water feels like it's almost giving you something. And even when you're in the shower, you're taking a bath. It feels like you're immersed in life or that it's speaking with you. Now they want you to use water as a portal. And that's very important. It was very important that I tell you that. So when you use it as a portal, you're going to have so much more access to yourself and information that you are then going to give others. Remember, all of you are leaders and you are here because you work for the GFL, whether you know it fully or not, and you are going to be leading others. And guiding others so your success is our success this is our empire so with you using water as a portal and using that to give information out and to access your info you could then do your mission powerfully oh that makes me happy bro for real okay go ahead ski i think you wanted to say something you could go ahead yeah, I was about to say, um, everybody that's is that doesn't want to age as much. I got a book about it, <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm beginning the youth in process, becoming younger and younger, revitalizing myself every day because we are kind of, every second we kind of are a new being, so we can become more youthful and youthful if we choose to. But yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Have you experienced with that yourself? And I know because herbs and all those things are a big part of you and your understanding of health and keeping the body the human body at its optimal you already know you're gonna be teaching humans about that so have you experimented with that yet yeah um i've been feeding off cosmic waves like i'll go on like three day fast with no food no water and then i'll just i'll just ask the cosmic wave to nourish me and stuff like that but i've been reading this book called man's higher consciousness i dropped it in the library and when i say this book really gave me some perspective on like how yogis and stuff live like the 200 years old and like thousands of years and stuff like that yeah but yeah that's what i've been learning right now and like i'm integrating this knowledge because this shit is powerful like not having to eat and just feeding off cosmic waves is definitely interesting so tell us something that you've learned or that you have been really heavily changed by or looking into right now that would be of great benefit for us right now i would say i've been looking into like cleansing your colon and like 
start having more connection with like like people don't know it but our bowels and like our colon and stuff zaps a lot of our energy because the way we eat nowadays we eat a lot more than what we're supposed to and um i'm learning now that the more like because i don't think anybody's obese i think people are backed up to be honest so i think a lot of people just need to start you feel me going on a slightly fast and like start understanding that you could have some things like habits and stuff that's actually getting you to eat more than what you should mm-hmm. and i'm breaking those habits within myself first and then i can have more of an explanation to say to others so. i really like how you said that too because all of us are in that i want all of you to be in that awareness that we are growing and we are we are all going to be known on earth we're already known throughout the galaxy all of us they're watching even this right now trillions of beings watching this because like we always say and i remind you guys every single event that they are watching this like a movie and they have favorite characters so all of you have thousands millions of beings out there that are watching you like it's an episode you know when you watch tv show and you're like oh that's my favorite character that's like them with all of you guys it's it's just makes you so happy so all of you be aware that you are building so we don't know as much as we are going to know and our full power what we are going to be in i always am told and even don mentions this so i'm like okay this has to really i need to incorporate this into me more is that don't be in a rush to be the one or to be the teacher or to do what whatever it is you know you are going to be don't be in a rush to do that yet because you're only at your halfway point. So next year, you're going to feel more solidified. You're going to be more 60%. And the next year after, you're going to be way more potent. 2025, a lot of you are going to be seen. Like, like you're going to have a lot more people watching you, a lot more people looking to you for things. And 2026 and 2027 is when it's going down, down. So you're growing. And you know where your place is. And you f- if you don't know it, you feel it. Just don't rush because we're all learning. What I learned from Ski, a big thing, was the colon aspect he was talking about. When he was talking about it, I watched his videos. And his health, I really love his videos. And one of them, he talked about the colon. And I was already being told energetically by the Federation about uh, like how, because I was saying how much I don't want to eat. Even though I'm hungry, I don't want to eat and things like that. And then I came across his videos and I kept, they kept telling me about emptying your body, cleaning your body. And they're like, you, you're going to notice you go to the washroom a lot more times a day because you're cleaning out so much stuff and you get backed up. And as your body gets lighter, you, you can't hold that stuff as much as you used to be able to. So then I came across his video and I was like, okay, so this is for sure something that is powerful that I need to know and that everybody needs to know. I also want to mention this is that you guys are all remember leaders in a different way. So you may not be on social media. Maybe you own a store or you own like you make a school and you got classes or whatever it is. It is so unique to you. So if you feel like, oh, I'm not... I'm not here or I'm not doing that. So I'm not as important. No, no, no. If we don't have each and every one of you, if one of you were to just disappear, it would be way harder for us. And I'm looking at literally every one of your names and I'm seeing how important you are. Never think that you're less than what you are. And if when you get those attacks, especially the draconian attacks, when they come in, especially as you are getting more powerful, you're feeling your power. Thank you so much, Terry. I appreciate that. As you get more powerful, you're going to get more attacks. And more, if maybe not blatant attacks, like low-key, you already know how the Alpha Draco do. They're going to send you low-key attacks. Maybe get you to think darker. Or they're going to like send a being to get you to think dark or attack you when you're in the astral. Um, or they infiltrate a person and then they send that person to be your friend and then it cause you to get lower vibrational you see what i mean like it's very smart and intricate they're gonna do that to stop you but the more the higher you get 
and you see those attacks, it's telling you you're on the right path. Ooh, Genie. Genie said, man, I had a reptilian come through my portal and mess up a video I was recording yesterday. Whoa. Actually, similar thing happened to me. So the Alpha Draco I'm fighting in the astral, I started, me and Broly been talking about it for a bit. And then that some of you met the little girl, Marissa, that very powerful girl. For those who know, you know. And the kids that are helping me fight it, they get attacked a lot blatantly. Like all of a sudden there's all this stuff happening in their house. And at one point I was, I was texting about it. We were talking about it and my internet cut out. And everybody in the house was like, what the oh, internet working? But everybody else's was fine. And my computer started glitching. Literally started going like this. And my phone was going. Ksh, 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 ksh. And I already, I already knew what that was. But your mind will be like, oh, it's a coincidence. No way I'm talking to, because I wrote his name. I said, this is his name. And this is what he's been doing. This is what he's done. And the computer and the internet started going crazy. So. That's very common too, as you get more potent and the more powerful beings start saying, all right, we got to handle this guy, man, or we got to handle this girl. You're going to see physical manifestations, especially lights flickering. That's a really common one. Ollie said, just happened right now. The glitching. Yes. It always happens, especially when I'm live. You guys already see when I go live and all those Draco come in and they're always like, you guys see it. They're always like, we eat Lyrans or we rape Lyrans um, and fight me in the astral. So they're showing real bluntly. And the glitches in the live too. Like all of a sudden, maybe your your audio glitches out. You can't hear me or your internet cuts out. Um, some of the kids came to me and they're always like, man, every time I watch your videos, the computer just shuts down. It stops working. And I can't tell them, oh, it's draconia. I'm just like, oh, well. Looks like the you looks like something's trying to stop you, right? <laughs> and you already know the shadow banning. That's big. That's big for all content creators that are in this area. Really, right now, the video and internet was weird. For no reason, or is it my post? Um, it's your post. They're they're trying to get you see the video, especially on TikTok. The Stupidest, the stupidest videos are, are popular. They'll be doing stupidness and it's so popular. And then the stuff that's actually empowering, it's pushed away or it gets really low views. I'm like, I ain't got to say, I ain't got to say nothing. You know, they do eat lyrans and other humanoids. I saw it when shadow hunting in the astral. They literally do. And if you're physical and they get you to kill yourself especially then they literally feed on your soul so when i talked about in my youtube video how the reptilian was telling the girl i can't wait to eat you later and it was trying to get her to kill herself it would literally she would kill herself and then she would end up being eaten eaten in the astral by them that's another intricate concept we'll touch on when we get to the draco uh the draco events but they literally feed on fear and they feed on flesh and they feed on soul energy and emotions. Specifically the dark ones. Monsters Inc. was a good movie to emphasize that. Worst part of being a secret spy. Ooh, thank you for saying that too is as you wake up more, you're going to see how much this is like spy work. Literally, you're we i always mention i always say this because i i want to make sure it's ingrained in your head because it it was never kept being ingrained in my head and i wish someone kept telling me was you're a federation galactic federation agent so it's almost like um have you you guys watch on um, the movie total spies the federation made me watch that and then they gave me a whole briefing as it's watching and i was like yeah. in my eyes i'm like this movie is bomb as hell because it was just emphasizing star seeds the animated one yes just like that i watched the movie on youtube really 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 good and in the movie it's like oh you guys are chosen because you have the dna of of spies and um you're here to help humans and uh stuff like that or here to help the people and then it's like they have 
they have an under it's just so when you watch it you'll see what i mean i'm working as a secret spy right now and all of you it's almost like um you already get your missions and assignments but you're gonna get them really blatantly they're gonna tell you you need to go here just like with robbie you need to go here you need to do this and you're like all right yes sir and you go there and then you see whoever you're supposed to help and you're maybe you have a disguise maybe you're just you just work at dairy queen and you're a cashier or you're someone on the phones like you're work for the <laughs> phones whatever it is you powerful i have a disguise right now well i uh, trained to be a secret spy for some time then i went on another mission so i was like maybe i'm not going to be a secret spy then one day they're just like put this disguise on you're going to new york <laughs> And I went to New York and I uh, found this place, the Reptilians Hangout. It looks like a basic uh, Middle Eastern food place. And I get in. I am in my disguise. like I look like a dark reptilian. And the lady, the owner, tells me she got amazing tiger meat. Ooh. And they are eating lion animal there. And I just tried to sit and like she served me and I looked at the plate, it looked disgusting. <laughs> then I, oh. well, of course I didn't eat it, I can't. Then I uh, tried to do like, oh, I, ha I have to go. Then I left and some, some of the other reptilian guys saw me leaving and he was like, bro, you didn't eat your tiger. <laughs> it was oh. my like first uh, spy work, but right now I am more pro. Right now I am I, I am amazing. I am a snake. <laughs> I like I am good at lying and stuff right now because of this. <laughs> Normally I'm not very good at, you know, stuff like that. But it's Let me it's ask fun. you, did you know or did they know that you were uh there basically doing spy work or anything? Did they know who you were? No, uh, they just thought I, I was just one of them. Because Whoa. I was wearing disguise. Like they didn't suspect anything. It was just a... Uh, a casual place it was not like a very secret base place so wow, but i am right good, now I, right now i am better <laughs> right now i go in the secret base places stuff like that and you know as a well i go different places like i went into like a mother ship thing i went to new york a couple of times and i go underground by the way they uh, Usually I'm uh, working like for the underground bases. I'm like slowly getting there, getting inside. And the funny thing that my disguise is male. Like why? <laughs> I don't know why but my disguise is male. And like be uh, acting as a dark reptilian, I can handle some stuff, but I am so feminine. Like I think that's why they picked a male disguise for me because they want me to you know work on my masculine energy too mm -hmm. i don't know do you know um they keep talking about your next mission involving the astral and going or using the astral to visit some sort of underground base so i'm curious if you've done okay. that yet but that's coming up big like you're gonna get a big one soon okay well, I am ready. I thought it was going to be a little boring, to be honest. You know, just hanging out there for a long time just to do just one <laughs> small thing. But it's fun. Like, I am having fun. I am like, bro, like my nemesis used to call me a snake. Literally. <laughs> like, lying as a snake. Like, he, like, tried to, uh, you know, swear like that to me. But right now, I am like, yes, I'm a snake. I love snakes, by the way. I am a snake right now. You will see how good a snake can be. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm loving that spider, bro. <laughs> I want you to tell me more about that, okay? When it's a these yeah, you come sure. here. Sure. I will tell everyone. Okay, beautiful. Beznu, I have a message for you. Uh, you're getting your Lyran memories now. And some potent ones. I know you've been a little emotional, not necessarily related to the memories, but just emotional in general. And use this mode you're in now to get those memories more and to find your power more. You may not even, um, part of your memories you're getting right now 
are through what you're going through. So any emotions you're feeling are helping you actually to get that and to get those memories and that power. Okay, bro, Kim Possible. Oh, I love that show. It's I, I was binge watching that one day while I was on a road trip. I literally binge watched it for a whole like, what was it? 12 hours. <laughs> and that's when I was learning about more how I'm going to be, how essentially I'm a spy. And so they were like, you're literally impossible. And watching it, I'm like, damn, it is. So when you switch the view of it and you're like, this is just telling you what a star C does. And we're working for the GFL, being a GFL agent. It really looks like impossible. She's in high school. So all y'all that are in high school doing agent work, you literally can possible. Be who I wanted to be as a kid, role model. Literally me too. Oh my God. I'm mainly, um, it's mainly when they want me to spy and do shadow hunting to help others, to help other beings out. Yeah, that's one cool thing with you, Kali, is that you are you have a huge focus on helping people. So a lot of it is like, okay, I will fight to help these guys and I'll fight over here to help these guys. But a lot of it is like you want to assist consciously or give them things, more wisdom and energy, and you will fight or go into the darkness so that you can give them that. Love it. Gotta go. It was nice chilling with y'all. See you later, bro. Hey, Cash, do you see any connection between me and a white dragon? Yup. 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 Yes, sir. But I'll, I'll stop there, okay? I'd never spoil your future for you. Really cool. Teary, for you? For you... Not much to say right now. You're on a very personal development track and a mode of seeing yourself in a better light and seeing who you truly are. So you're more on a personal focus and then you're going to get heavily a big spiritual focus later because the spiritual is very tied to the personal. So see yourself as you're evolving personally, you're really evolving spiritually because that personal part is a foundation for the spiritual part, okay? I need your opinion on a reptilian attack that's happening to me. I'm not too sure what to do. Ooh, this reptilian keeps appearing in and out of your room. Have you felt that? Like appearing in and out, it's it's watching over you, trying to, it's like keeping track. I, I, I used to call them something. Um, I forget what they're called, but essentially they're sent to check up, collect energy, whip out, see what you're doing, and then whip out. Um, Thierry said, very true. I do feel my personality is very connected with my spirituality. Thank you, man. I got you, bro. Sara said, I was fighting red serpent dragons in my dream. It was big as fuck. Sara, when you get a picture, show it to me. Oh, I was in the astral and I performed an exorcism. Can you see if that was linked to a different experience I had when someone texted me saying the ghost is back? So uh, you said you was in the astral, you performed an exorcism and you said the ghost is back. It's related. Now the ghost is back, depending how that could go. It's like, is it is it back in the person? Is it? It's, no, that's it. I'm going to stop there. It's definitely around the person or in the person something like that so it looks like you got to go visit there and check up see what's up yes i have felt a presence in my room and there's a reptilian in my friend group okay so the best thing you could do when it comes to reptilians you you really do gotta reptilians you always play chess with them that's why i always tell my star seeds and the ones especially the little star seed kids that i have in training mode i'm like learn chess first Learn chess so you could at least have the chess mindset so you could understand how to beat them. So that's something if you want to take on, uh, that would definitely be a benefit. But um, I mean, they're in a chess mind. Yeah, I also want to say something about it because mm -hmm. um, this reptilian girl joined our friend group and has been influencing 
my friends into be like doing like alcohol like vaping and all that and they've like it she's just changed them all and literally last night after game night my my friend who's like really spiritual i'm really connected to her is starseed um pretty sure lyron and she was like they all kicked us out the friend group literally just last night and the funny thing is is that at that time they were all with her so it's i don't know what to do about it so you notice that it's attached to a certain person yeah okay but the thing is we can't it's going to be difficult to try like help them because they've now like kicked us out the friend group right and it's started. like new right see the chess play yeah oh, super cool so what you could do is uh commonly with this because this one's going to be kind of a an intense one so this is kind of a harder kind of mission so if you want to take on this quest to stop this reptilian the best way is to you could gather up this is all depending on how you want to do you could gather up power so you could gather up people who are going to essentially help you um to take down this reptilian by helping the person it's just like in miraculous how it like akumatizes somebody and then when once they get the akumatization off of them then they're like oh what right it's gonna be just like that with this person so it's totally up to you if you want to do it now or if you just want to step back and be like how do i want to handle this but like oh, for example some of the kids now. that have had reptilians on them uh the best way was helping them raise their vibration and then the reptilian would leave it's part of me is saying to do it now yeah. but i don't know how to let's like start it tell us a little bit of what you're thinking we're all really interested how how do you think you are going to handle it or what is your plan well because i think i had like slight vivid like thoughts about it like i was thinking maybe going into the astral and going to the like person where this reptilian is like attached to and <laughs> fighting it off and like putting i don't know like that's what i was thinking okay I, it doesn't I sound say, like a good plan but it's no no, no it's actually not bad because just like with a lot of reptilians i'm facing there's a point where we have to go to the astral to fight them like one-on-one -on -one, like face to face like that so have a tactic where there's something you do while you're in your physical body where you basically make it hard for that reptilian and know this may take time Sometimes it, it, it takes a whole chess plan to then get there. And then at the end, if it's very persistent and it's not leaving, then you go to the astral. Or every night you kind of go to the astral and challenge it while you're challenging challenging it in the physical too. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. I would love to know more about that as well, how you handle it. Because this is your first time battling like a reptilian in this sense like one-on-one -on -one, and you have one friend who can help you is this the girl that was kicked out of the group as well um the spiritual one yeah she's in this server okay but she's the one that's more affected by it because this mm -hmm. like reptilian girl has um basically held a grudge against her because she accidentally rammed a door into her by accident and then now she's holding, like, this reptilian girl is now holding the garage and gotten closer to all our mates and influenced them and got them all against us and then kicked us out, the friend group. Isn't that crazy how they move? So once they infiltrate, they feed on their, their dark emotions and their dark desires. And then they basically get the person to be like that. And then they're like, all right, now we got to get basically see it as like they're right behind them they're like all right now we got to get all of these other people that are of the light and that are going to make it hard for me to infiltrate out so you two were the first one to get out and now you see what's going on you decide how you want to do this and you're going to make mistakes okay and it's going to be kind of annoying you're like how oh i tried this tactic kind of worked didn't this one didn't work this one really did work yeah. you are finding a way of battling them yeah and what's also weird is that you know they're all following this like reptilian girl they're all like they all love her and but like me and her like me and my best mate we know the truth and to be honest 
we well, we were both talking about it last night and we were not upset about it we ha- i had no reaction i don't i just don't feel anything about it which is weird because normally i'd be like crying and like going oh why is this happening to me or something like that but i'm just like not i don't have any reaction to it yeah it's like okay and <laughs> yeah that's exactly what i was like i was just I love confused that there. Mm-hmm. okay so as long as you know how it works then you're set now it's you may this kind of probably will be a little um war for a little bit and it's almost like your mind is like i want to save them and yeah you, you take your time with it okay because it will take a little while especially for your first time you're learning a lot at this moment and if you need help at all you got a whole empire here that could help you and i could also send um some astral guards if need be but i definitely i don't want to um i don't want to infiltrate in your evolution yeah that would be great but um, i've got school on monday and so you know i'm going to be seeing all of them and so i, I want to see how it goes but i don't think i'll be seeing that them that much since i have mock exams during that time okay but i just like want to see how it like plays out as well so mm-hmm. maybe i'll wait like a week before i maybe go into the astral to try get it off of the girl sounds good so while this week is happening you're just kind of studying you're observing collecting information seeing how it works and kind of also thinking about how you want to handle it that is perfect i support you 100 percent, aaron wow thank you thank you for the advice as well and everyone else who has given advice and support especially flame who helped me a bit uh yesterday i really appreciate that as well thank you i'm so glad we have a whole family here this is why we are here for each other so your success is our success we love you love you too ollie said i was about to write that i had a dream that i was fighting with some beings with weird eyes they attacked me and i was bleeding from my eyes but some girl i helped but some girl helped me and then we was fighting the big one and then when i woke up i was sweaty and scared i wrote this earlier and want to know your opinion yeah you were you already know you was fighting a being especially because it felt so real and you woke up and you have physical um manifestations of your battle like when we're fighting when we first me and broly when we first decided to fight the alpha draconian i was like listen i need help fighting this big guy bro he's controlling the whole town and broly's like i got you and we went and then it got me with its succubus and then and then she was left at that mode she woke up and she was tired she was getting downloads too and she was getting upgrades but part of it was she was she was done from the battle and i felt bad she was like i could barely move i'm so tired and that that broke my heart i was like i'm so sorry i left you this never again and i'm not gonna let this this succubus has been attacking me for a whole year now and i now i fully am aware that it was sent by this alpha draco and i noticed it came about right when i started deciding to fight the reptilians in my town so i was like okay so there's some moves here and i see who the big guy is so a lot of you are experimenting and experiencing the reptilians that are sent by the big guys and this is my first time fighting an alpha so i realize it's gonna also be a huge part uh a part of my job to go through that first fighting the bigger guys so then i can help the rest of you guys too because you guys will as well rena said what does a succubus look like oh they always dress like someone who you really are attracted to or really connected to so i realized i'm gonna have to heal that part of me that's still connected to them in that sense and like let go of my sexual attachments it basically fed off my sexual attachments i mean knew if it sent a succubus that looked exactly like them it was gonna be over like it, i was gonna let it happen and i knew i was in the astral and i did let it happen because i was like oh i'm here might as well just like see how it fed on my desires i was like oh well might as well let it happen because i'm never gonna get it physically and then i let it happen and of course it's never worth it so i healed from it now it's kind of gone but i realized after is that with the succubus it's like they have venom 
It was like when I first got attacked by the reptilian I always tell about. That was a textbook example. I was like, I want to see what happens if I get attacked by a reptilian. And I let it happen. And then all that shit started happening. It was like this was a succubus because I was also in the astral with it. I was like, I want to see what happens if I affiliate with this succubus since I've had this relationship with the succubus for a while now. And it has a venom. So it's like when it bites you or it gets you, you have the sexual energy that lingers on you for so long. And it's like throughout the day. So throughout the day, you have this sexual energy toward them. It's almost like you took a Viagra or something. You're like, why am I so horny? Like, it makes no sense. And it takes a while to fully get that sexual energy off you. A few days, maybe, depending on how skilled you are energetically. For me, it took the whole day. Um... And you know what? I'm, I'm going to get very kind of vulgar here, okay? But this is me being frank with all of you. Even if you were to touch yourself in any way and you use this person's, like the visual of this person and you allow their energy to fully be there, this is why I had the relationship with the succubus because I would use the energy of the succubus to help me use, to, to do sex magic, which is basically when you touch yourself and then you use that energy to when you basically you ejaculate and then all that energy you use and you put it somewhere to manifest something. So I was experimenting with that, but I would use the succubus and I knew I was and I wanted to have a relationship with the succubus. But every time it would never be worth it. It like drains your soul in a way the best way to explain it because they would always say oh, it drains your soul but i'm like you know what i want to experience this so i can explain it to people in a way that makes sense i had it happen and you feel lower that's the only way if you feel lower and you feel um again the sexual energy is almost like it makes you want to it makes you want to touch yourself again so you could connect with it again and want you to keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it until you're done and then you're, you're like this. So that's what's going to feel like. And then the venom makes you want to go back to it. But you're going to have to fight it and be like, nah, not now or never again. It's hard to get a relationship with the succubus for me anyways. But I'm in the process of where I it's not touching me no more. I'm aware of it. So anytime it tries, I can flick it off. Sometimes it'll almost get me. But I don't even want it to almost get me. I'm like, just go, go, right? But I've been in a relationship with the succubus for about a year or two now. So kind of been hard. Queen Favi said, do you think it's more worth it with a succubus than um, an incubus? I kind of consider them the same thing. Um, like, because uh, mine was a male. Or it'll really just mess up as the person that it knows you're going to want. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it, it was like that for me. If you wanted to say something, you could go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, because I wasn't sure if they're like the same entity and they can, I know some of them can switch from like the succubus and incubi, but I feel like some of the infernals anyways, they just stay in one energy, like in one masculine energy. Um, but for succubuses, I guess if they don't have a soul, they can be any entity, like masculine or feminine. But um, some of them stay in their own energy. So I'm like, hmm. I wonder what's the difference between the ones that can switch versus the ones that choose to stay like in just one energy, whether masculine or feminine. I don't know. It's really interesting. I'm still trying to learn. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. That's actually really interesting observation that you gave. I actually want to understand it too. So when you understand it more, please yeah. let me know. And I'm trying to understand it more. So I we're going to exchange information. Yes. Oh, I, I never, th that makes me think now. I never thought about that. I kind of just categorize them as the same. Ooh, I definitely want some more on that. Mm -hmm. I'm dropping the book. I feel it's needed. Yes. I don't want to meet any incubi or succubuses. <laughs> I'm telling you, for any of you that are, um, that are demon hunters, coming across demons is not scary anymore. Sorry. It's like... It's not scary. You're just like, a, oh, yeah, you know, they're there. And then you kind of want to understand how they work. The only thing scary is like not knowing 
how they're going to chess move you or how they're going to do you this time. But other than that, when you're around them, you're like, okay. So that relationship with the succubus, it wasn't scary. It was, um, it was just interesting. Yeah, they can be tricky. They can be friendly. I don't know. Sometimes you question, are they really my friend or are they like tricking me? But then you wonder if they're with you every single time, then they have some type of like commitment towards you or some type of affection, whatever way they can feel that. I don't know. True. It's like you you literally build a relationship with them. Now, I want to tell you yeah. guys this could actually happen. And they really? get attached. They're so attached and like it's it's they have attachment issues. That was exactly with me. And I didn't even realize I had this relationship with it until recently. Mm -hmm. Once I started becoming more aware, I was like, whoa, I've been having this relationship with a demon for years now. Yeah. And, and it makes sense because then you're in your mind, you're like, oh, okay, that explains that, that explains this. Yeah. It just makes so much sense. They be getting jealous too. Like if you're like talking to another human, like they get jealous and they try to like do things. And it's like, no. Dude, yeah you're adding it up right yeah yo i did so much research cash i told you i thought i was like i was searching how to get a demon out of your house like wash your floors and shit but then that was because i was <laughs> inexperienced and i did the research and i talked to him and i'm like oh you're just like me but dark i don't know it's just know. they're not scary as the 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 media or society makes them seem except they hate you then that's like oh good luck you know <laughs> But yeah. they hate you. They can, they, they're very scary. But if they like you, they, they can be a little annoying. But I don't know. I think they're. I don't. I don't know. I don't have any. I don't hate them. I just feel like they're a little tricksters. You can't trust them, you know. And I like to trust people. You know, some demons. Um, I was just. What book was I reading? I forget what it was, but it was when the Federation's like, here, read this one. And one big thing they noticed, oh, it was my encyclopedia of spirits. Oh. And they were saying, go to here. And I looked and they were like, it was the demon part. And I was like, I already know about demons. Why y'all want me to read this? But it went deep. And the part that was really interesting is it said that demons, they're not trustworthy because you don't know what they're going to do. And you know how the dark works. But some demons you could build a relationship with. Or they could help you or some form or some way. Demons are a category of just low vibrational entities. So some low entities, you could actually help them. Or you can form a relationship with them and then they become lighter or whatnot. But they say overall, you just shouldn't trust them in general. Because if you do that, you know, you're going to open yourself up to being tricked. So they say low vibrational entities overall, just... You don't hate them. You're just like, nah, do your thing over there. That's what your hell dimension is for. Do it there. That is very true. Where uh, demons are not your friends. The good ones are just good jinn. A demon can't be positive. A jinn can be. Demons are negative jinns. Isn't it like that? I thought everyone knew that. See, that's that's what I mean. Is like That's where it can get intricate. I don't like seeing demons anymore because then it's... it's I'm trying to get away from that. I try and say low vibrational entities. So, um, low vibrational entities overall, yeah, you can't can't really be their friend. But it depends on how dark they are. If they're kind of just lighter, dark ones, they're there for a reason, right? You could go help them get to the light. But most demons, that's going to be hard. That's a that's a quest that you don't necessarily want to take on. Is trying to help a demon. And I honestly, I don't have any experience with that yet. I know I'm going to experience that trying to help one. So we'll, we'll come back to that topic for sure in the future. You got to learn self-discipline, like Aaliyah said. Okay, is there any, um, we should end it here. Is there any final questions or anything you guys want to say before we head out? Because I'm excited for the next one. Besnu said, can you tell me if I was a space pirate and positive or negative one? You were one and you were neutral. So you could be positive or you could be negative. You could do anything you want. And that's what we loved about being space pirates. I was one too, but I'd rather say Galactic Bounty Hunter because my whole purpose was to take down dark beings. I basically worked for the GFL as a bounty hunter. 
and you were too. But before you did that, you were you were what people would consider a dark space pirate in their perception. But really, you were neutral. Whoa, a huge being just walked through my portal right now. Whoa. Okay. What uh, being is it? It's it looks like um it's kind of like a water being. Oh. Purple, purple skin, water, and it has like these fins on the side. I'm trying to ask okay. what it's doing here. He's saying <laughs> he's saying he's like, I just came to spectate. And for Anjali? Oh. Are they still yes, Anjali's still here. Sounds like your family, bruh. Your family's pulling up in here. You got three. Two sisters. Sisters. A mother and another sister? Like, no, nah, I could be a brother too. So you'll probably know them as a brother. Oh, and they're hugging you. I don't the energies um it, I, they keep showing me their spaceship, so it's kind of shadowy but purple. And they're talking about their history. They're like, we're tell her that we're warriors and that we're gonna be in her room soon. We're gonna be around you soon. Get ready for that. It, it looks yes, it looks very similar to what Andy just sent. Like that, but their fins are more out like this. And um purple skin, kind of dark purple. And the spaceship they're in is so big. And it has all these pockets and a long, huge, huge roof. It's like you're in a whole whole ass building. But I keep wondering why it's shadowy. But it's not dark. It's just kind of shadowy. And I think it's because they're their warrior ship. They keep saying warrior ship. So. Looks like you're tapping into that big time, bro. I'm hype. I'm so happy for you. They're, they like made it clear. They're like, look. And I saw a bright light. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you guys saw me go like this. <laughs> you're so welcome, bro. I got you. Okay. Let's end it here. Let me stop the recording did i do that right <laughs> what do i gotta do again andy <laughs> oh i got it there we go okay this was this definitely was an amazing class conversation and i see now we, we got to continue to be in flow with these because i went in like oh we're gonna talk about pleiadians and draconians but we went a whole separate path and it was beautiful so you know what for these we're gonna stick with divine divine conversation so i won't say we're gonna talk about this specifically but um i'll say we could talk about this next time and then when we do another one it'll just be whatever free flow whatever we know is what we're supposed to talk about now okay I'm getting a whole bunch of text messages. I got to go on a quick assignment now. So I love you guys so much, man. This family is what we are here for, what we need. So we are going to continue to do this as usual. Aaron said, thank you all for your advice and support. You all have given to me during my explanation. I I can't emphasize how much we're all here for each other. So we are only as good as each other in our weakest link. So we are each other's strength and we will continue to do our assignments and missions no matter where we are in the globe. And we will be together in it. Thank you guys for being here with me. Help me build this empire. And I will see you guys in the next one. I love you guys so much. Okay. I will see you soon. Peace out.